It's the 100th anniversary of Maryland basketball, and here to celebrate it is a player, a coach, now part of the department, Gary Williams. What first attracted you to become a Terp as a student? Well, I was in New Jersey, and um, I wasn't going to get into Princeton, so uh, I headed south, 95, and uh, Maryland was nice enough to give me a scholarship and allow me a chance to play, and I feel very fortunate to have played in Cole Fieldhouse in the old Atlantic Coast Conference and had a lot of great memories as a player. Not many wins, but a lot of great memories. Being here tonight, you were obviously such a huge part of the 100 years of Maryland basketball. But, you know, just what is it like to see a lot of these familiar faces, whether it's people you coach, people you just know from being Maryland Greens? Yeah, I, I think this is, you know, 100 years, it, it's, it's hard to believe. So you step back and look at it, and when you're coaching, you never get a chance to do anything like that. So it's been good for me, you know, to think about all the guys who played for me, but also to think about, you know, the really the modern era of, of Maryland basketball was probably when I was finishing up and Lefty came in, and you know, everything has happened. And you know, we, we have a, a just, you know, I, I I think about tomorrow, you know, the game on national television, millions of people watching the University of Maryland, seeing the Maryland brand. And it's just a tremendous thing, and hopefully we've been a very positive thing for the university. You, see, you said, you say 100 years. It's been 17 years since the national title. First of all, does it seem like that? And just, you know, when the clock strikes, you know, when the calendar strikes March, what enters your mind? Well, it goes quick. Uh, I think, that, you know, 2001 and 2002, really, uh, because I thought we, we probably had, we were younger, but we had as good a talent. Um, you know, with Terry Ma Terrence Morris, Danny Miller, people like that uh, in 2001. So uh, it was just the experience that we uh, gained by getting there in 2001 that allowed us not to let anything distract us, you know, in trying to win it uh, the following year. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C., Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Oh, sure. yeah, that's a big part of it. If people look at it and they, they see six games, that's all you got to win. And it looks easy, but it's, it's one of the harder things to do in sports because once you get past, say, the first game in the NCAA tournament, if, if you're a, a high seed, then you're going to be playing teams that are probably capable of beating you on a given night, even though you might be a little better than that. Joe, this was here before. You said that this year's team sort of reminds you of this freshman year, where you know, they, they, they came up with a little bit of height, but like not a whole lot, and then it's quite different. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, Somewhere, uh, oh, we, we had two freshmen and three sophomores to start. We started the whole year with those three fours. Of course, the freshmen were Joe Smith and Keith Booth, which, you know, were just great all time players. In the world. But the three guys that were part of that, Johnny Rhodes, X Ray Hip, and Dwayne Simpkins, they came to Maryland when we weren't any good. We were horrible. You know, we had sanctions. We, we couldn't play with the ACC teams. And they had the faith that we could get good. That was very important. Uh, and that got us to the Sweet 16. We went from uh, three wins the year before in the ACC to the Sweet 16 their year. Are there still any oh wow moments when you come to Xfinity Center and see your name on the court? Yeah, I mean, that's not something you ever think will happen in coach. I, you know, just, I was a JV high school coach the year I left Maryland. I never thought I'd be a college coach, let alone have my name in the court. So a lot of good people along the way helped, uh, a lot of great players, and, you know, it, it just wound up that way. Not bad for a former college soccer coach, is that right? Yes, I was. Six years, Lafayette College, head men's soccer coach. Yeah, speaking of Did he kind of run things by you when he when he did become a head coach at Nebraska? Well, we talked some, and um, I've seen him play a couple times at Coppin. I think what Juan has done the hardest thing. He's gotten his teams to play with with passion. They, they, they play, 
and now as he recruits and gets his own players in the program, this is his second year, I think he's got a chance uh, to make Coppin an outstanding program in the MEAC. So hopefully things will go well for Juan. And, you know, the, the big thing with Juan, which got overlooked, I think, sometimes because he was such a spectacular player, he really knew the game, you know, as a player. In other words, you could talk to him about things in practice that you wouldn't talk to a lot of guys about. What's the biggest difference in coaching a young team going through, even for the ACC, March going through Big Ten, and, and say, when you had Juan as a senior and Ronnie as a senior, that team? I think the hardest thing uh, with a young team is to, is to keep them focused. In other words, you win a great game, practice, you know the practice the next day is going to be hard because they're all cocky because they won. If you have a tough loss, you got to find a way to get them back up and explain to them what those things are going to happen during a 30-game basketball season. And so with a veteran team, a lot of times, you don't worry about those two situations as much because you understand that they've been through it before and they know how to handle it kind of on their own. I think the, bit, the biggest thing with the veteran team sometimes is complacency. You, you think that, oh, we'll be all right, we'll win enough games to get to the NCAA tournament, you know, that type of thing, because they've done it before. And so you, you have to guard against that with the veteran team. Thank you. This is Mason Viner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on capitalsportsblog.com and terptalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast.